Okay. I see your screen. But I don't hear you. Hey. Hi. Alrighty. Uh, so let's go into the notes. Um, it looks like we were with the code here. It looks like we were calculating exactly where the ball hits the wall. Um, And that's what this note says. More accurate wall hitting location. Um, that's not really a to-do. Uh, calculate more accurate wall hitting location. Um, cool. So... Go ahead and take the wheel and drive. Where should we go? How should we calculate where the ball hits the wall more accurately than we currently do? Uh, I kind of forgot where we are. Okay. Um. Do you have notes or something that you can uh, read up on where we are? Uh, not really. Um, does this code... What do you think about this code? Do you have similar code? You do. Okay. Um... For you, this is, oh, I saw a line that looked like this, but I don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. Okay. For you, it's line 306. Okay. What are we trying to do with this? We're trying to, so we have X, we're trying to find the slope. And what are we trying to do with the slope? We want to find where does the ball hit the wall. So here is uh, one possible situation. In one frame, the ball is here. In the next frame, the ball is here. Another situation, the ball is here. And then the next frame, the ball is down here, let's say. And so we want to put a line from here to here and see where it intersects the wall or a line from here to here and see where that intersects the floor. In this ASCII art version of the, the ball. Uh-huh. Um, okay. And we wanted the slope because uh, if the, well, the, the point where the ball actually hits the wall is somewhere in between this point and this point. And so to figure out exactly how high up it is, we need the slope between this point and this point. Or to figure out what the x value is, we need the slope between this point and some point down here. Okay, then, okay. So for this uh, case, if we know that we hit the left wall, we know if we hit a wall, like either of the side walls, we know that the we know what the x value is, and we just need to figure out what the y value is. The x value, 
uh, here is zero, and over here it's however big the window is. So we need to do some analytical algebra, or we could do geometry. Um, we don't need all of the stuff that we have here. We you only really need one x and one y, right? Uh, if we have the slope, if you just have, have slope form. Yeah, if you have x, y, and slope, you can figure it out. Um, I think I was uh, avoiding this because this number might be zero, and then you would have a division by zero. Um, so I was uh, trying to avoid that. Uh, however, if it is zero, we could just write a special case for that. Um, and actually, we are in the middle of a left wall hit location, so the slope will never be infinity. It'll never be straight up and down. Um, if the ball is traveling straight up and down, then it can't hit the left wall. Um, so we can we can ignore that case. So yeah, we could use uh, a single x, y, and a slope to figure out the location. So okay. I'll, if you don't want to use a slope, then what else could there be? Oh, we can use the slope if since we're doing left wall hit location. Yeah, but if we want to keep it consistent between all four walls um, without um, needing to write a special case, then I, was there an idea you had in mind to how uh, you do it without a slope? Yeah, uh, there is a way to do it without dividing by zero. Um, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Uh, and I was headed towards, uh, the two point version of a line. So if you have two points, then that is another way of defining a line instead of a point and a slope, um, in 2D. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. It if you need something more in 3D, but uh, anyway, um, so that's what I was doing here, but we can also just use slope like you had because we are limiting it to just the left wall and we don't have to worry about other special cases for now. Um, and I think that's probably, uh, like what we could do is write this function uh, and ignore the special case, and then write all the other functions ignoring the special cases. And then, once we've written a few of them, uh, once we've written them, then we can see what's common between them, and maybe we'll find out that we actually do need a special case, or we need to go figure out um, what the... like, go research what is... how do you do it without a special case? Um, mm -hmm. I think there's something where you can like project it into a higher dimension and then project it back down into a lower dimension and that'll give you uh, the answer that you want without dividing by zero ever. Um, oh, I probably did that last year in math. Yeah. Um, you use vectors and shit. Yeah. I don't know... <laughs> Uh, off the top of my head more detail than what I just said so um, so yeah I think I think though that we can just do the l limit ourselves right now to just doing the left wall where we don't have to worry about the slope being uh, divided by zero okay so, if we're doing that, then we don't need, um, let's see, 
x1 is prior left edge, x2 is left edge. Yeah, so we need either one of these, but well, not both. Um, and either one of these, but not both. So uh, if you want to do point slope, which point do you want? Um, probably, you would probably want, um, I, the, it's, it's not, there's not like, you could use either one. If you have this point and the slope, or if you have this point and the slope, you'll be able to calculate where it hits the wall either way. So it's mm -hmm. up to you. I think we can. It's I think it's, not obvious to me which one is better. Let's just do the self dot center y and self dot left edge. Um, self dot center. So right now that's y of two, but I'll just do that. Also, I need to use um, the bathroom real quick. Okay. Sorry. Do 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 do. Yeah, I'm back. Cool. Um. Uh, so, uh, it'll definitely be like, say, the ball is here and it's traveling this way. It'll definitely be the left edge of the ball that hits the wall. So we either want left current left or the prior left so the current left would be over here and the prior left would be over here yeah mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it'll end up being easier just to use the left side of the ball and the slope maybe the center of the ball maybe it ends up not mattering um, oh, no you need that for the point slope because right? yeah the as the ball travels from here to here let's say it's going slightly downwards as it goes um, as it travels the left side of the ball would hit the wall a little bit higher than the center of the ball would hit the wall if the ball just kept going until the center hit here. So yeah, um, because the left side of the ball would hit the ball, the wall, <laughs> and then uh, if it didn't, and the ball just like kept going through like a ghost, then it would keep going on its slightly downwards trajectory until the center of the ball got there and the center would be slightly lower. So yeah, we, I think we do want specifically the left-hand side of either here or here. So this one is current and this one is prior because if we're hitting the left wall, that means we must be traveling in this from right to left. So uh, we either want the prior left edge or the current left edge and it, it, I don't see a good reason to choose one or the other so which one do you want um let's do self dot left edge not prior okay that's shorter so that's a reason to choose that um and then the so that's the x and we can just call it x since we only have one. Um, and then the y value, uh, since we're doing left edge, we will do, and we're not doing prior, we don't need this one either. And so this is our x and this is our y. And this is our slope. And... Yeah. If our uh, velocity in the x direction is zero, then this will cause a runtime error. 
divide by zero error. Um, but mm -hmm. we don't care about that right now because we are limiting ourselves to this and we know for sure that that won't happen. Um, okay, so now we have an x, a y, and a slope. How do we figure out? Um, so that would be know why there's such a delay um, so that would be the X and Y of the left hand side of the ball over here and the slope between that point and the left hand side of the ball over here the left the leftmost edge of the ball over here so that the that point and the slope between there and there so now we need to figure out what is the Y value here we know the X value is going to be zero for the left wall What's the y value going to be? That's what we need to figure out. Oh, um, so we can just we need to do it in code. Okay, well, in math. Yeah, in in math, which is usually pretty straightforward to translate into code. Divisions into y minus y y is equal to. Um, X one times slope is to y equal x one times slope plus y one. Um, so we actually do have two different points that are of concern right now. The left edge of the ball over here and wherever the intersection was with this, the wall. So maybe we do, after all, need the two-point version of a line. Wait, why? Because unless... Because when it hits the, because wait, what? Um, Why would you or, need a second unless point? The second point is the the point where it actually hits the wall. So this point is unknown. Although we do know the x component of this point, mm -hmm. and this point is known, and the slope is known. Actually, yeah, we can just list out. Knowns. Uh, I mean, yeah. Isn't it just this then? Like, the zero. line is this, and then if you plug in zero to x, and you just get x one times slope, and then you move the y one over, so that the y is equal to that. So then it hits the y at zero, and then wherever y is to the slope, you can just go like. Um, so what, what does the code end up looking like? Um, hit, I guess you could just say equals zero comma what? Uh, X one times slow plus Y one. X one. Is that? Oh, I see. You have. Oh, sorry. I used instead of x, I just used x one, just because. Uh, y one. Okay, so we have x one. And then what did you say? Um, x one times slope. Times slope. Uh, plus y one. Plus y one. But that's like x one times slope. Parentheses plus one, plus y one. So I don't think we need to do the parentheses because it's MDOS, just to let you know. Oh yeah, the this part will happen first. The x one times slope will happen, and then after that, we the Python will add whatever value is in y one. Okay. Then we also need yeah. 
what else do you need? Uh, nothing. I mean, in the future, you would need a prior hit location, and that would just equal to hit location, right? Because we're going to calculate the distance between the two points if we hit the left and the bottom. Because we need to keep track of where it hit the walls twice to generate a line and distance between those two points. Um, yeah, I think we could... I think we could do that. I think we could also... Um, use this function just to calculate where the hit location is and and then we could later in a separate place um, record what the hit location was and update the other hit location the prior hit location uh, yeah that makes sense um, so for now uh how do we know if the let's let's see if this works how do we know if this works um we can print hit location and if we know that we set the ball, where's where, where do we set the ball velocity and start? Um, uh, probably in when we call ball. No, maybe in class ball in the init. So here's the initial velocity. Uh, Let's make the here's the y initial location. Zero. And then let's just make it let's say fifty. And then now if you run it, then it should be when I print hit location, it should be zero fifty. Uh, I changed the velocity to have no y velocity. But the gravity. Oh, there's still gravity. Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> I forgot that we had gravity. Uh oh. Whoa! Looks like that broke something. Um. Oh, yeah, um, calculate, yeah, where, so are you printing, you're printing the hit location here, print hit location, um, I'm gonna do an F string, so that I can tell that that one is the hit location. And then I'm also going to print the uh, location and the slope, the x, the y, and the slope. Uh, so the, the x I think like this is probably the best way to do it x y oh <laughs> uh, and N equals slope slop. Um, yeah. 
and then we can tell whether those are in the same, whether they seem like they're in the right spot. I'll print it all on one line to make it easier to tell what goes together. Uh, and this is for calculating left wall hit. Do we actually call this function? Yeah, it looks like we do. Okay. So let's try running that. Um, When, okay. For some reason, I have a push. And like a random thing. Stop that wall. Hit the push. Gotcha. Left wall. Oh. <laughs> okay. As soon as it hit the left wall, it died. Um. Oh, X and Y versus X one Y one. Whoops. Uh. So yeah, let's you see if we can figure push? out what's up with the push. Um, I don't where, can you bring up the, the this. error? Um, let's see. So attribute error list has no attribute push. Self dot wall dot push center X center Y. Oh yeah, we were in we were in the middle of or a th one thought that we had was instead of main maintaining two variables um, hit like the hit location and the prior hit location we could have a single array where we in it and it will constantly have two values on it whatever the two most recent wall hits were the location of those um, I guess uh, I guess it doesn't have a push method. I guess we should go look up. Uh, how do you do push in Python? Python list push. Um, most efficient way to push and pop on a list in Python. Oh, we actually don't want push and pop. We want, I think it's called shift and unshift. List. Uh, Python list shift unshift. Maybe it's shift and unshift. Why does it not have shift and unshift? Um, what we want is to add things onto one side and then pull them off of the other side. So we're constantly adding the newest thing over here and dropping the oldest thing. Maybe it's, uh, drop um, Python uh, I think the generic name the generic data structure is called a Q Q U E U E um, also we don't need to do that right now you could turn it back to having two separate variables. I wonder if I uh, do that. Let's see. That's in the update. Uh, so def update self dot update velocity. Yeah. Okay. So we're here and then if a wall was hit. Uh, yeah. I'm doing two uh, variables here. I, I didn't start doing, changing it to be one variable. So you can just comment out the second line here where you have self.wallhit.push and turn it into this. Um, and that's probably not the only change you're going to have to do. Uh, but let's find out by running it and let Python tell us uh, what else <laughs> needs to happen.
in uh, more heavily typed languages, you'd be able to tell it. Uh, you'd be able to tell before running it what uh, what other problems arise. Maybe nothing. It looks like yeah. it's running for you. So that but counted it's as a also not. Hit. Okay, wall, wall. It didn't do anything. It didn't print. So not a call, right? Yeah, maybe you don't call calculate left wall hit like this. Oh, oh, I commented it out. Oh, ha. Um, cool. And I will try running it on mine. Hey, look at that. Alrighty. Oh, I didn't change the X one. Whoops. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. So... The X value of the leftmost side of the ball, it detected that it was outside the bounds of the wall when it was at this location and the number that it gives here is very very close to the number that it gives here this number is ever so slightly bigger than this number I wasn't really paying attention to whether it was going up or down this says that the slope was negative so if it was traveling to the left it was going like this so that would be up uh, as it goes to the left. So it should be that this number is ever so slightly higher than this number. So all of that stands up to um, at least a first pass check. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should round the numbers <laughs> so it's not quite so long. Um, yeah. But like, seems all right. Can you think of anything else to do uh, to check whether this is calculating the right location? Um, I think it's pretty good. Okay, um, hmm. All right, well, let's say that it's good then. Uh, let's make a commit. Go ahead and make a commit that says that the uh, a commit that the calculation is happening correctly. Yeah, this this proves that it works actually pretty well. I would say. Oh, it's rolling on the floor. Yeah, you can see how the x values yeah. are completely different yeah. but it still comes to the 580 yeah the slope is exactly zero to however many decimal places that is or maybe we make it zero because we make it roll a uh, lol okay maybe uh, it's not that impressive oh. <laughs> but hey uh at least the calculation <laughs> works when the slope is zero yeah um can you scroll back up and see, do you have one where the slope is not zero? Oh yeah, no, for sure. Mine is a little more off than yours. It goes all the way up to like a two pixel difference, but that um, is not bad. That just means my ball was going faster, I believe, right? I think so. I think we can put that down to the ball was going faster. Um, the location that you that the uh, wall hit was detected, for me, it's only just barely outside the uh, the 
bounds of the the window. And for you, um, you have like a one here, so it's like several pixels. Oh dang, you have one where it's like five. Yeah, so yours is just traveling much faster, so it's more likely that when the soonest it can be detected is uh, further outside the window. Um, I guess the more important thing is that it's further outside the window, whatever the reason. So it's further outside the window when the fact that it's outside the window is detected. Um, so it makes sense that it would, the actual, the Y value calculated for the intercept is a little bit higher than uh, the difference is more than the difference is for me. Nice. The difference between the calculated intercept value and the actual location, the Y value locate the Y value from when it was detected outside the wall. Mm -hmm. Stop, you are violating the law. The law of I think there's actually not a law about this, and it is technically, it is actually very improbable, but not impossible that the ball actually does just pass right through the wall. Like in real life, we never see this because you'd have to have a perfect alignment of a bunch of subatomic particles <laughs> and that's extremely unlikely um, but we do actually see this in real life with uh, the limit of how small we can make chips I think that's the same effect um, electrons are able to jump from one side of a transistor to the other side even though the transistor isn't open Mm. if they make it too small. So they make it just bigger than that size, whatever that size is. Um, oh. That's... I'm surprised that that self.wall hit doesn't cause a problem. It looks like there is still leftover code from making the wall hit... Instead of being mm. wall hit and wall hit prior, it's wall hit as a list right there. Yeah, that part. Uh, hmm. Why doesn't that cause a problem? I don't know. Uh, can you take that part out of the commit? Well, yeah, I'm making a commit off of this and this right now. Uh, but you said why to staging that hunk. Wait. Oh. I said why to staging this hunk, no to this, why to this, and no to this. Uh. I'm I think this. And I think this. you. I think that's the exact opposite of what you want to make a commit out of. The. Well, no, I'm gonna just write that. Oh, do oh, do I just save that for later when it, this is complete? Oh, that yeah. makes more sense. Um, but since you're in the middle of it, I actually don't know an easy. Oh no, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know off the top of my head how to undo whatever's in staging. Get revert something, something. Uh, try, actually, um, I think in more recent versions of Git, they have a Git unstage. Try doing Git unstage. Yeah. No, okay. Uh, hold on. Don't auto, wait. Git unstage. 
how to unstage changes on the stage. Um, to do get reset from staging index. This will remove all the changes from the staging area. Okay, yeah, that's what you want then. Cool, uh, and now it should be as if you never staged anything. Cool. Um, yeah, the wall hit thing, we don't wanna make a commit out of a partially completed thought. could literally say calculate left wall hit location <laughs> the name of the function as the nice. commit message um, uh, okay so now that you've made a commit out of that um, we don't use this value yet. Uh, we could return it. And then we could potentially do something with that value here. Um, I think we should do this same idea for the other walls and ceiling and floor and stuff. I think ceiling and floor okay. are going to look significantly different. So I guess I think maybe starting with the right will be easier. Yeah, it will be the right edge. That hits the wall first. Right wall. I know there's no function with that name. It looks to me like you copied and then you went through and you changed left to right. Yes, yes. Is that it? Okay, I think that's good. No, that can't be. Because here, this isn't going to be zero. So that part for sure uh, has to be different. It's going to be whatever uh, the width of the whole place is, which we have a global variable called width for. Width. So, uh, oops, calculate right. Oops, zero width. Alrighty. Oh no, this is different. You have to add x1 times if they multiply with here as well. No, x1 plus plus width first and then multiply by slope. Like this? Or is yours? Yeah, it looks like we have I think so. Okay. Let me double check my math that goes y. Okay. And we can so print it uh, to see what it y. looks like. Y minus Y1 is equal to slope and X minus X1. Oh, it's a minus, not a plus. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Right, uh, so then uh, here? So that is that. Yeah, so that is that. So when x is equal to width, go like that. Oh, it's width minus x1, not x1 minus width. Whoops. Cool. Um, multiply, I mean, you add. 
plus one, and then that is y. Yes. Okay, I should be good now. Um, and I'm looking up how do you make it be just two digits instead of however many digits it is. Uh, okay, so we want it to look like that. I'm going to put here format specification of I don't think we need more than five. Probably don't even need five. And it's not working. That is so sad. Oh, I don't call it. That's why it's not working. <laughs> Pesky having to actually call the code. Um, so, open. Yeah. Okay. Oh no. Why? Unsupported unsupported format string. Hmm. It's probably this part. No. How is that not defined? It's defined right there. I copied and pasted it. Still doesn't like that format. Um, okay, I'll just. What the? Because that one I'm How not. How's it sure not about. defined? How's it not defined? I'm so Calculate, confused. Uh, maybe you need self. Yeah, you need self dot on one. Oh, shucks. Fiddle. Fiddle sticks. What if you also want to do the equals? Well, let's see if this works. Okay, okay. for some reason it's really weird. My, even though it's not going that fast. Yeah. Like my, my ball is not going that fast, but the, the difference between the zero and this are very large. Oh, hit location. Do you think it's a steep... That's what the problem is. Do you think it's a steepness, steepness of the slope has something to do with that? Um, it's probably just the math is wrong. Uh... Oops. Let's do that. And... Okay, so... Let's go look at the, that's my guess, is that the math location, or the math is wrong. Um, is it giving a value that's like, very I think it is a, weird. Oh, like, look at this one, for example, 611. I think, I think this part here, this width minus x1, is that what you have? Yeah. Okay, I think that part might be wrong, because if we turn this into the number 0, then we get negative 1. And I would expect that if we turned this into the number 0, we would get the same thing as we have up here. And up here we have positive x1, not negative x1. Oh, that should so, be negative x1. Because it's x minus x1, so yeah, no, the first one is wrong. should be negative x1? Yeah. Because if you do the slope of a line, it's y1, y minus y1 equal to 
slope times x minus oh, okay. x1. Then, let's see. So, if it was outside the window, then traveling back towards the window would be going down with a negative slope. So yeah, the number should have been smaller. I don't remember what mine was. Um, let's... This is not going fast at all, and it's getting... Like, sometimes it's like plus minus three, plus minus five. Uh, hey, there we go. Okay. So I got some numbers. Um, so it hit the right-hand wall. Uh, you might want to just do it until it hits the very first wall and then close the window so that you can think about what just happened for that one hit. Um, okay. So I got a wall was hit, and I'm limiting this to five spaces. Um, this is, it's just to the right of the wall, the right edge of the ball. Oh, did I change it to right edge? I did. Okay, cool. Um, when I did the search and replace, right edge. Okay, so, uh, so it's just to the right of the right wall, and it's the y value is ninety point five. That means, and the slope is negative. That means as it goes to the right, it the y value should get smaller. So that means this number should be bigger than this number, and it is not. Oh no 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 no, but, uh. This is just to the right of where we're calculating. So if we go back in time to the right wall, we would be going upwards. So actually, yeah, this is correct. Uh, whoops. Um, so what happened here? So we got 90.5, 90.6. It at least passes the is it bigger <laughs> uh, test. Is it the does the value go up or down correctly? And it looks like it goes up correctly. Yeah, if we were traveling down and to the right, that's what this means. And we are starting off just to the right of the wall, then if we travel left, we should be going up. So this number should be Wait, smaller isn't the than x this isn't number. the y axis yeah. flipped? Okay. But wouldn't the slope be oh. opposite? Yes, the y-axis is flipped. Oh man, that's so annoying. But yeah, that's that's also true. I would really like to use a system that flips the x-axis so that the origin is at the bottom left and bigger numbers mean go to the right and bigger numbers mean go up. That would be cool to work with a graphics system that did that. I know the historical reasons for why it's the way that it is, but I still think it would be cool if it wasn't like that. Um, so anyway, this is the right-hand wall. This is the left-hand wall. Let's see if this passes. So uh, if bigger number meant going up, then this would be correct. But bigger number actually means going down. So we want so we want the y-axis to be flipped. So No, it's still me. Ding. No. Um wait. But the slope is also calculated with the y-axis flipped. So I think we're, I think it actually is okay. Cause go, so going towards the right, that means the X is positive for sure, but the Y may not be positive. Going, so going that being, down is so that bigger Y. That is going up. We are going up right now. Um, 
Yeah, I guess I should uh, run this again and watch. Is the ball going up as it hits the right wall or down? And then we can tell how to interpret this slope, if the slope means what we think it means. All right, so do do do, going to the right, going down, up, up. Okay, it was going up, and this slope is negative. Okay, cool. So that's actually consistent then, even if it's uh, not intuitive. It's consistent. Going up is a negative value. A yeah, negative that makes slope. sense. That does make sense. Okay, yeah. Which means if we are just to the right, then, and we were going a negative slope, then as we go back, we should be getting a larger number. And this number is smaller than this number. Yeah. This is where it was just to the right of the right wall. And this number is ever so slightly smaller than this number. And that means this is higher up. So the ball was traveling this way uh, up and to the right. And we it hit the wall here but we don't detect that until a little bit further. And the y value here is a little bit higher up, which means closer to the ceiling, and the ceiling is zero. And so it's a smaller number. Uh, so if you went backwards in time to wherever it hit the wall, that should be a little bit lower down, which should be a slightly bigger number. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we're calculating right hand wall. Uh, if not exactly correct, then at least in the right ballpark. It passes the tests that I can think of, the, the intuitive tests that I can think of. Oh. Ugh. Okay. Um. So, <laughs> okay, so I think I think we're good with the oh. What, don't need to save that buffer. I think we're good with the right edge and the. I guess I didn't. I didn't go back and double check left edge after thinking about the y axis being flipped. Um, I'm pretty sure it checks out all of the. There's there was two flippings of there was a, a flip of the slope and a flip of the absolute value of the y, so I think it should be okay. Okay, that was clearly traveling up as it hit the left wall, and. Uh, up and to the left would be a negative slope, but the y-axis was flipped, so that's a positive slope. Okay, so far so good. We are just to the left of the left wall. So as we are going this way, we hit the left wall, and then we go a little bit further. So the y value here should be a little closer to the ceiling, which is zero. So it should be a slightly smaller number than when we hit the wall, which was back down and, and to the right, which is further away from the ceiling, which would be a bigger number. Is this number a slightly smaller number than this number? Yes. OK, good. OK, so I think, I think we're calculating both of those correctly. Um, that is surprisingly difficult to, and it's just, it's just one thing. It's just flipping the Y axis. <laughs> <laughs> Why is yeah. that so hard? I don't know, but it is, um, <laughs> anyway. All right, cool. So I think, I think you can make a commit out of that too. Uh, and okay. then that'll be good for today. Sounds good. And then, uh, oh yeah, it's good that you didn't commit the other stuff because then we have a reminder that we were in the middle of making that change. The thing about the wall hit and the prior wall hit and using um, an array or something, a queue, instead of, a, uh, instead of two separate variables.
Um, a few late. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wall hit location. I think that's a good uh, commit message for that. Hey. We don't actually, we don't actually use those locations yet. Um, I oh, think we are calculating them. Yeah, I think I think we have to do ceiling and floor before we can do corner detection because the corner involves either the left or the right wall and either the ceiling or the floor. So we have to do at least one of them before doing corner detection, mm -hmm. which we can do next time. Yep. Okay, bye. <laughs>